You're listening to Barbell Logic, the podcast where we talk about what it means to experience strength and how you can use simple, hard, and effective strategies in training and nutrition to improve your life. It starts with meeting you where you are right now and finding lasting solutions. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Matt Reynolds. I'm here in my hotel room, as is my life these days. Joined by uh, Nikki Sims and Andrew Jackson. You guys know both of them. Nikki is on the podcast pretty much every week. And we're here to talk today about, well, we're throwing the gauntlet down. Let's just be honest. We're going to throw some gauntlets today. Okay. But probably not the way you think we're going to, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about online coaching versus in-person coaching. And rather than coming from the perspective of, let me tell you where you're wrong, we want to tell you where we were wrong. So for years, we have said that in-person coaching is always better than online coaching. But the reality is, is that after six years, we've noticed that it isn't always better. And then in fact, online coaching is probably better for most people. And I get it. People are listening. They're like, yeah, you own the online coaching company. Of course, you're going to say that. But I've also been an in-person coach for over 20 years. And so I want to talk a little bit about why we believe that is true. Uh, Certainly, let me be clear. I am not lumping big box personal training, which I would absolutely like to actually uh, have war against (laughs) with with in-person professional coaching. Those are two different things, right? And so we've been in-person professional coaches for years. We've been online coaches for years. And we've had this conversation as a staff for a long time now. And so uh, I'm going to start with Andrew. As we start to think about and we've compared, I guess one of the things we've done even from a business perspective is we were kind of in the beginning, I, I would say, at least if I were being vulnerable and honest, we were sort of chasing in-person coaching. Like, how can we provide as much value or as much as we can in an online coaching uh, environment as we do in person? So as time has gone on, why has our, why has our opinion sort of shifted to the online coaching being maybe better for most people? Uh, even though we're not really like we're going to use the clickbaity title, we don't really think in-person coaching is wrong or bad, and we all still do it. I still do it. Um, why has some of that stuff started to change? Yeah, it's hard to even remember back to six years ago and how different the coaching and fitness industry has changed. You know, especially now that we're on the other side for the most part of of COVID. And online coaching is ubiquitous. Six years ago, we were almost apologetically offering online coaching. Like, man, yeah. you know, it as a last resort, hire us as an online coach. But please, if you can find an in-person coach, absolutely do that first, then come call us if you can't. And the thing that's shifted the most for me is a combination of of three things that is really comes down to my perspective change. So if you disagree with this or have a different personal experience, that's completely fine. But I have certainly changed to come to value online coaching more so than in person. Because I think that I can add more value to my clients experience over a longer period of time and therefore get that get the client better results. My job as a strength coach is to help my client get stronger to help improve their quality of life. Yeah. And strength, as we talk about all the time, is the long-term investment. The famous analogy, the 401k of fitness. And getting stronger and staying strong and adapting to all of the changes that happen in life takes effort over a long period of time. And as an in-person coach, I could not have the clients that I've been able to maintain online, nor provide the results to those clients, that some of which I've had for five or six years. Yeah, I've moved, they've moved, COVID happened, we've changed jobs, they get hurt, their schedule is changing on a day to day basis. And yet I can continue to show up within 24 hours, seven days a week, and be there for that client and support them to reach their goals. Agreed. Nikki, what what are your thoughts there? You watched us walk through this entire gamut of you and I in-person coached for many years together before we started online coaching. 
And now you've sort of seen that entire shift. Where do you sit on this? Well, a couple of different perspectives. I have my own perspective as being a coach and then perspective of being a client. And, um, you know, as a coach, it's just such a better life. I do not want to do in-person coaching anymore. I'll be honest. In fact, I just turned down some someone who's going to pay me a couple grand a month to drive. All, I mean, arguably, it was to drive up to L.A., which... I think you'd have to pay me a lot more to drive to LA. But like, <laughs> the lifestyle that it allows you to do, um, it that al- allows you to have is so much more flexible and adaptable. Like you can have so much more control over your schedule, which allows me to show up so much better for my clients. When I am trying to cram in, you know, eight sessions a day and, you know, getting hangry and, you know, just being in a bad mood for whatever reason and, you know, missing out on my weekends and getting resentful. Like there are so many fewer opportunities for me to get resentful for my schedule Mm. and I get to, you know, live where I want, which was very important to me. I get to connect with more people than I ever could connect with in person. Like I have so many wonderful people on my roster that I would never get to work with because I can't live in all those Midwest Midwest cities, nor do I want to. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I do. Um, It's okay. (laughs) um, And it's just so much more um, dollars per hour. (laughs) Not like, I mean... That's important. Like, but, I, by want, the way, I don't it, need it to make a shitload of money, but I want to be comfortable. <laughs> well, and you're and you're and also yeah, you're also a client. Too. You're also a yeah. client. So yeah, and on the client side, just re- like really quick, um, I get to work with the exact coach who I want to work with. Mm. And if I just had my pick here, while there are probably some great coaches, I get the person who I want to coach me, who to who I want to connect with like four times a week and who I want thinking about my programming. And if I only had the pick of people here in my city, I it would be a loss. Yeah. 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 I think as I started to think about this stuff, uh, and especially, you know, people that listen to the podcast a lot will know that we've started to shift a little bit to the the who's kind of listening, what the demographic is. We've talked a lot, uh, even from the beginning of the podcast, for that beginning lifter. And we started to talk more and more to the barbell enthusiast, to the up and coming coach. I think this is a really important episode that we talked to kind of the entire gamut of, of that audience of from the absolute beginning lifter to the professional coach. And I think many of the arguments can be made work both ways. So you guys already mentioned the flexibility issue. So to me, one of the, one of the primary values of online coaching over in-person coaching is the flexibility to either A, train as a client where I want, when I want, anytime I want with the equipment that I have available to me. And that is not the case if I have to do that in person at a specific location. And as a, as a coach, oh my gosh, especially as now a business owner, somebody who travels all the time, I'm not at home right now. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a hotel. And yet I broke down videos just about a half an hour ago of my clients. I broke down my wife's videos who I would have trained with this morning. But she went ahead and uploaded videos to me. And she was like, that was so cool that I got to see like what you do, right? Like it was cool. Mm-hmm. And, oh, so, um, and so for me, the, the flexibility to be able to coach as a coach in Springfield, Missouri, coaching clients all over the world, and not just in Springfield, Missouri, but also when I travel to these cities, when I'm doing seminars, when I'm on vacation, I actually still really enjoy coaching. And I typically coach mm-hmm. even on vacation. So all of those times are, would be missed sessions with clients if I coach them in person. And so for both the client, the flexibility, I can't tell you, we were talking about this before the show started. Every single day, I have at least a couple of my clients that say like, oh man, life just got in the way today. I know I have this, this uh, workout schedule on Tuesday. Coach, is it okay if I push it back to Wednesday? Yes, of course it is. But what was the answer when I ran Strong Gym? And I was there in person. The answer was, sorry, you're out the $60 for the session and you didn't get any coaching. Yeah. Or you would reschedule to another time that may not have worked for you. Your or schedule is just them, like jerked or around. Or they get a substitute coach who isn't yeah. their coach. Or so there's so that flexibility, that piece to be able to coach anywhere you want, anytime you want, right? As long as you've got internet access in hotels, at your house, you can live wherever. We've seen a lot of our coaches move from like, very expensive real estate areas to less expensive real estate areas or 
somebody like you who did the opposite, but moved to Orange County because you just like love the beach and, love, and you're like, I want to live there, but you get to keep coaching your clients. But we've also watched the clients be able to do that where the clients can now like, man, I'm not stuck with whatever coaches are available in my town or in my city. And maybe you live in New York City or Atlanta or, or Dallas, and you've got a handful of great coaches. You still have to connect with their schedule. You've got to connect with their price point, which I'll get to next. You've got to like all of those things still make it more complicated. And if online coaching is done right, you actually get your pick of any professional coach in the world that you want who you connect with the best that you can connect with. That's exactly right. And so the flexibility to me is the, is the first real, like I started to see that. I never even thought about it. I mean, honestly, I didn't, when we launched the business, I wasn't like, how big of a deal is this? And you start to realize, well, the last thing I want to talk about, and I don't want to put the cart before the horse is if is effectiveness is, is well, and, and so we'll get there. But the reality is, is that I can coach you in all of your sessions online. Yeah. And you have an opportunity to do all of your sessions online. If you're if your plan is to do three sessions a week or four sessions a week, you can almost always get those done. You might have not been able to get them done at 9 a.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, like you were supposed to if you're going to come and see me in the gym. But having the flexibility to go, man, it just didn't work out at 9 a.m. this morning. I had to do it after work today at 530 p.m., but I still got it done. Boom. Perfect. So I actually think the flexibility piece has a direct impact on the effectiveness piece. Make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, because as I started out saying that effective strength training is going to take consistency over a long period of time. And probably more so even than the exact X's and O's of the program. Yeah. yeah. So if you're able to adapt and be flexible as a coach and vice versa the client, it's going to be more effective. And, and I would say that's the second major thing that's changed for me, and it sort of teased, teased into the effectiveness conversation if you're ready to move on to that piece. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that's the most complicated piece. I think, but yeah, I think it's really important to talk about. It's so, super important. So number two that has changed for me is the relative importance of that in-person session, particularly the first session or maybe the first one to three months of training. I used to place a very high priority on the value of that for the client. I thought that was crucial and important and we had to get the most possible strength that we could in a really short period of time and fix, quote unquote, all these mm -hmm. technical issues so that they were proficient at the lifts. And the, the argument against online coaching was you just couldn't do it. You couldn't do it as fast. Uh, you couldn't do it as effectively. You couldn't change their movement pattern in real time. It was always delayed uh, and it would be slow. And I, first off, don't place as much value on that first period of training. I place a much higher value on what we were just talking about, that consistency over a long period of time. And, and I also don't think that even the in-person coaching that you can get, I, I, would, I think that you can make a counter argument that it's, that it's even any more effective or efficient. Yes, you can change things rep to rep in real time. Yes. But I think I have more lasting and effective change for the client's lifting patterns with the equivalent amount of time online. Right. So, so let me yeah, break that so, down yeah, more specifically. Yeah, I was going like, to so go into that. So what's an average session so in take an average in-person first session is an hour and a half, 90 right. minutes. At least that's what I used to do. Like sure. somebody who did a drop in or a first time or I've never lifted before, they'd come in and spend an hour and a half with me there would usually be the 15 minutes beforehand or I got there early. I had to drive there, which in the Seattle area could be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on where I was coming put from. Put the polo on, look good. I got, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm really still the, doing that. Put the pomade <laughs> in the hair. You know, got the, <laughs> get the, in the, then you got the cleanup <laughs> afterwards, you know, the, the interaction yeah. post session, maybe you go out to dinner, whatever they're doing, you know, whatever Which the is situation not all bad. is from a community perspective. Yeah. Let's be clear. Like there is an advantage. I do like to hang out with real people. Sure. I, I think you guys do too. <laughs> it's a concentrated period of time. Absolutely. That's exactly right. And sometimes the people I like to hang out with happen to end up being my clients. Sure. But the reality is, is that at the absolute minimum, 90 minutes is how long it takes for that first session. And I, I would argue that that's even ridiculous because 
you take the shower, you put the polo on, you fix the hair, commute. you do the commute, da, da, da. you do the thing. Yeah. You show up 15 minutes early because that's what you do when you're when you're a professional. You stay right. 15 minutes late. You shake right. the hands of the spouse. Like so, it's you talk really about schedule. That's right. Even it's two, two, about schedule two and a half can hours. Be, right now, yeah. How emails. long does a session take you now? And I know it took longer in the first days of of yep. Barbell Logic Online Coaching, but how long now does that entire first session take you? To coach your client, I average a three three to five minute video per workout, right? With my clients, uh, and that is total setup time, recording, uploading the video, changing the program in real time, yeah, and moving on to the next client. Yeah, and you it's actually not show because them. I'm rushing. I want right. to want to make sure I'm clear. Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm right. sipping coffee. Um. I'm efficient and effective in my workflow, but it's not because I'm going, are they, are they, are they talking a million miles right. an hour and moving yeah. as fast as I humanly could? I'm, I'm providing uh, all of my coaching feedback as if I were talking to you right now. That's right. And in fact, I think a couple of my clients have told me they'll often put the video up on the TV, like the family gathers around. I don't want to like <laughs> brag or anything, but <laughs> like, check this out. It's, you know, they're watching the YouTube videos. Uh, and but we, we it, talk to them like we're talking to them yeah. because yeah. we're talking to them. The real world like, feedback I get. It's not even a get. life thing for me. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee. Totally. I'm having a conversation with somebody. As a matter of fact, I will, I've joked about this before on the podcast. Sometimes I'm like, no, 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 no. Sit back a little bit more on rep four. And then yeah. they don't do yeah. it. I'm like, you're not listening to me. But it's really, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm just breaking down yeah, their the, video the, from the day after. So The actual feedback I get is I'm talking to them. People will often talk back to me yeah sure. like Absolutely. their spouse will be like who are you talking to yeah <laughs> and yeah they're like oh it's andrew and it's like, coach what is wrong with isn't you? this async <laughs> isn't this asynchronous <laughs> right so anyways so if it takes the, three if it takes three to five three minutes to, five to minutes. break down a yeah. video right and and so, that initial session took of 90 minutes to two hours exactly how many sessions can you coach in a in a 90 minute to two hour period online where you're given right. real legitimate feedback focusing right. on the cues that they can remember for the next session right you get to show them visually what you see which i think is something that you never get to do in person right they they're trying to feel what it feels like weights heavy on their on their back you're yelling at them the octave is like of the music is lower they can't hardly <laughs> hear anything and i think there's some real value in being like we do these screen recordings and they get to see what coach andrew actually that coach andrew's watching me coat watching me lift and I get to see what he sees. And mm -hmm. then he stops the screen for a second. Like, look, look where your knees are here. Look at where your back is here. And you're like, oh, I would have never been able to see that right. in an in-person session. And I think that it's also important to say right now how we weren't really able to do this or maybe not able, but just not doing this when we first started online coaching. Yeah, but that's right. six years down the road. Right. We look a hell of a lot different. Like yeah. there are so many, I mean, we're developing our own software to make better coaching come through to the clients. That's right. That's so a great point. It's we've intentionally gotten to the point because we care about online coaching, obviously, and we want it to be really freaking good. Yeah, and right. so the work that you all do, that the whole team does to make sure it's we're striving for value for mm -hmm. the coach and the client, which means we're trying to help the coaches do the best job they can, which means delivering value like that. When we talk to our team, that is the currency that is important to them. Yeah. Like how much can they give to their clients? Yeah. Right. And, and that, uh, that has to be emphasized that that change over the last six years, because I couldn't have made that statement six years ago when I was only typing text feedback yeah, which is um, when how I we was started using a different software platform that didn't have all the tools when I didn't have my workflow optimized from six years of continuously uh, looking for ways to be to add more value in less time. Um, those those things have all evolved. So getting back to that math problem. So you, what's 90 minutes of online coaching when you have three to five minutes? Of interaction, how many workouts is that? You're talking somewhere between two and three months. That's right. Of time where the client is, and this goes back to your effectiveness cue, is having to solve their their own movement problems with me as a coach providing feedback. 
Yeah. So it's really, I think it it's more effective. And I think Nikki, you've mentioned this before, the changes seem more lasting because rather than them hearing my cue in the moment that they don't truly understand, and sometimes those cues can be like major overcorrections that cause problems later. That's if true. They they'll keep, take that overcorrection with them back to their yeah, home you gym. You cue, sit back, like, sit back, sit but back. But you told me to sit back. And then all of a sudden they're on their heels and they're That's folding right. in half. Yeah. But if you're there to course correct and update the cues or provide different, what I find is that more of my cues become external cues. We've talked about it. We've got a whole podcast episode, internal versus external cues. And you, I think as an online coach, you tend to have to lean more heavily on the external cues, which... Uh, force the client to solve movement problems based on what they can feel during the lift. That's right. Or, sure. or based on what they see, like Matt talked about. The amount of, vis- the amount of information that you can communicate visually and, and audibly in your feedback videos is, is just exponentially more than when it was only written. Yeah. yeah. T- tactical cues obviously become more difficult online. Sure. Right? It's not that we don't use them. We don't still use like a, a tubo or certain things that you could do to for some sure. amount of tactical cues. But so obviously it becomes more difficult, but the visual cues, there just really aren't, we don't, we very rarely use visual cues in in-person coaching. You can use them and we've used them before, but like they're not used very often. And then online coaching, visual cues are, are really, really key. And then when you pair that with the verbal or heard cue so that they can make the connection that what my coach is telling me is this, and I can see how that connects I think I think the light bulb comes on much more often than when you're trying to just sort of yell at someone with a barbell on their back who's just trying to finish the set and not die. And they're mm. trying and and then and so you're telling them these cues that literally might fix them a little bit from rep three to rep four, or rep four to rep five. But did they remember those cues for the next squat workout? And how many times have you had your clients, like I have my clients still print my cues out? They'll, or they'll watch the video from the workout before because it's only three to five minutes. So they can take three to five minutes in their warm up sets of their next squat workout and remember, oh, Coach Reynolds told me to say or told me to do this on Wednesday's workout. Now it's Friday's workout so they can apply it. That's, that's actually, I think, a lot more difficult in an in person setting. Another thing that I think you're able to do really well is show the client their programming and be really adaptable to their programming right there. I remember being a coach, it was challenging to do that because we would have the session or being a coach in person was challenging because we would have the session. And then I would have to remember things that I would have to go back home and rewrite their programming and hopefully remember it. And that was another chunk of time that I was spending on that time on that chunk of the client hour. So now we're able to show the client their programming make it very adaptable, make changes in the moment and let the client see, like literally see on the screen because we're showing them both at the same time yeah. where they're going. Yeah, so explain that a little bit more, Andrew. What yeah. Andrew does is Andrew will literally break down his client video like on the left of the screen and have programming on the right of the screen so they can see their program and their lift at the same time. And then so as they, as, if they struggle with a lift or, or something changes about a lift, you immediately, as you're breaking down their video, you're say, you'll say, oh, so what I'm going to do now for the next time you do this lift yep. is I'm going to go ahead and make these tweaks. So it actually gives them a better insight, I think, as well, not just into what you're trying to fix from a technique perspective, but it gives them a better overview of their programming perspective. They kind of always know where you're going. Yeah. Yes, that I'd say that's probably the thing that's most impactfully changed the value, the amount of value that I can add uh, to my to my clients uh, training right now that I can remember four, three, four or five years ago, we would often get in our NPS feedback, um, net promoter score, or basically our customer feedback, they would, we'd frequently hear, man, I wish I could understand more what my coach was doing with my program. Yeah. yeah. And Big I can picture. remember thinking, oh my gosh, like programming is already this kind of slog that I used to do on Sundays that I would save till the end of the week and do everybody's programming over like an extra two, three hour session. And, uh, it was, it kind of had that old feeling you were talking about Nikki of just like being hangry and exhausted. I can just remember many frustrated late Sunday nights 
And, and I just didn't have the time or the capacity to explain what I was doing. I was just trying to get through it as quickly as possible. Yeah. Now I'm simultaneously coaching the movement and watching pre predominantly the bar speed and some of the other feedback that I collect from the client on a session by session basis. And then talking probably most of the video about what I'm doing with their program, why I'm doing it and where we're going as a team, yeah. basically. So the, that's another one of those shifts in terms of what I perceive as my value as a coach is I have way more emphasis, I think, and way more value added on talking about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it and where we're going. Yeah. And, and they get to be part of that conversation too. There's way more interaction about what was that session like? What, what do you think? Here's what I'm, here's options that I think we could do. Yeah, I do the same thing. You know, you're working with somebody for three, four, five years. Like, I'm thinking about doing this to part of the coach. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. they have a better feel. Like that's sort of the things that, that's one of the things I think I've changed the most to overcome one of the disadvantages of online coaching is that it's harder to make those real-time adjustments based on how they're feeling on the day. And a lot of people revert to RPE and I've occasionally used RPE, but I, I actually prefer to give them more like bumper lanes, you know, yeah. here's kind of like what I'm, this is what I'm looking for from the session. Here's what I think you could do. And here's the parameters that I want to give you some wiggle room on. What is yeah. that? And what is this right here? This is the, <laughs> the only room. for the video, <laughs> only for the video watchers. <laughs> Check it out. You on knew I was going to do it. I, I knew you were going to do it. <laughs> oh, well, um, yeah. So, so give them the parameters and they get to have some ownership. That's right. Of yeah. what it's like. Cause sometimes you show up in the gym and you're like, this is the day. Yeah, like I'm going to put yep. the hammer down and yep. I've got the extra juice to really yes. grind for that rep. And then other days you're just like, I, I just want to get through this one. And well, and when, have... you, and when you don't give them the bumpers in my, my early days, I would have a lot of clients in online coaching. If they were just having a really bad day, they missed yep. their, you know, it's like three sets of five and they hit their first set and it was a set of four. They were just mm -hmm. like, I just didn't know what to do. So I just like didn't press the rest of the workout. And right. I'm like, whoa. Right. So now I have time to be able to walk through this and tell them like, here's the audible plan. If right. you walk in, like you had terrible sleep last night, you do the thing. All of my clients know what the audible is. Like for those of you who know, audible audibles, like, right. It's like what a quarterback Making does audible, yeah. when he look, when he looks at the defense in football and he's like, Oh, shit, the play that we've called is not going to work. He calls an audible, which is like, I'm going to do a completely different play. And so I give my clients, they all have, they're not, it's not the same. It's different for different clients. Yeah. It's different based yeah. on like whether they've got injuries or whatever. Everything is personalized. But they know like if you go in and this thing happens, here's the contingency plan. It's a contingency plan is what it is. Sure. So that they still are able to get good work in. They walk out of the gym feeling better than they did walking in. You can do all those things. Now, that is there for in-person coaching. So I don't think that's necessarily an advantage that online coaching has over in-person. No. I think it's a thing that it, it was a hurdle well... we had to overcome. Yeah, would you disagree? I was going to say, you can make, you can help them make better audibles online because you have so much information in front of you mm, right there true. on your yeah. screen. Yeah. Like, when how, I... How about giving them the freedom and the ability to make the choice on their own? Right. Which yeah. they wouldn't right. do if you're in person. You'd just be like, yeah. you know what? You just have to Take 10 them. pounds off the bar and do it again. Exactly. But they actually yeah. have to learn how to make some of those choices. They become free thinkers about this stuff right. which i think is really yeah. valuable and you because you're having a conversation <laughs> conversation <laughs> they speak to you via yeah. their check-ins and lifts and then yeah. you speak to them <laughs> the check -ins. But it does become you know you're having you know two three four five touch points a week yeah. that's a whole lot yes. of connection time and right. so right. you do get to guide them on how to make those decisions and you can teach them what you are incorporating into those decisions because you can show them on their dashboard and you have, because you get to connect with them five times a week, your library of that person is huge. That's versus right. if you're That's just right. seeing that one person once a week, like you don't have as much in your history with them to make the best call. That's right. One of my favorite things, Andrew, that you've done with the software, Andrew's the product manager for the software um, that that is now our software, you know, it's a third party software is that we come back to that kind of idea that we things that we do in business of like the game plan, the goals, actions, metrics, is that the software that we use automatically tracks all the metrics. Mm -hmm. And it tracks them so much better than I was ever able to do in person. 
So yep. we would track one rep maxes and maybe we'd track, we would track three rep maxes or whatever, but the software tracks everything. So everything. your best five sets of four. And there's times where I'm like, wow, that was a five set of four PR. If that's somebody I've cooked for three or four years, that's, that's actually cool. a big deal. It's actually <laughs> yes. a big deal. Right. And so, yep. so no matter what the set and rep scheme is, no matter what the exercise is, no matter what the chin ups, you know, body weight movements. And if they log how much they weigh, it'll like even track that like, oh, you did, you know, you did 30 total reps today on chin ups, but your weight was two pounds. If it was, I've got several guys that are underweight right now. So I'm trying to explain to them as their chin ups, if they stay the same, but they keep adding a couple pounds of body weight, like they're actually getting stronger because they're, they're doing more chin up weight. And so, right. or vice versa, whatever. So I love the fact that when you come again back to the effectiveness piece that you're able to see that like it's not that the metrics or the PRs themselves is the effectiveness piece. It, it's that it shows that it's effective. And so it's right. such a better job for us of being like, wow, we can track, we can track tonnage. We can track anything can be tracked. You can track conditioning metrics now. I mean, any of those things can be tracked. And that's there. That was even always a pain for me in the early days. I've, I have converted, I converted years ago away from the handwritten notebooks, but I still have 10 or 12 of those of the early days of the handwritten notebooks. And I remember what a pain in the butt it was to track all my PRs. Not, not just the one rep max, but like literally every PR. It was a pain in the butt to do it in the software as well, but we figured out how to do it. And now it's really cool because the, the, the very first thing the software tells both the coach and the client when the workout is complete is congratulations. Here's all the PRs you set today. Yeah, it's been a, I would say that's probably the second biggest change that's happened for me. I mentioned earlier it's programming in, in real time in parallel with the feedback. And I'd say the, the second biggest is, and it's a little bit specific to us at Barbell Logic that we have all of those metrics available, but that has completely changed the way I program. Huge. Um, and some of it is, um, I guess you could call it maybe a placebo or just the psychology of lifting that going back to the initial conversation we were having, the value of consistency over a long period of time is often a matter of finding the thing that's going to keep the client engaged and motivated to continue training and being able to see the metrics and also show our client the metrics visually in real time is I think very helpful for them to be able to see that even though it might be a different exercise with a different rep scheme, that they're progressing on something or they, or they feel like they're progressing on something. And in that sensation of progressing on something causes them to actually progress on That's everything. Right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah. You, it's a bit of a gamification of things, but it, it is. oftentimes people will say it's all arbitrary or it doesn't matter, but it does matter if it changes the behavior of the client in a way that they then reach their goals. Yeah, totally. So um, y y that can't be emphasized enough. Now, there's, you know, there's lots of other, if we want, just want to talk about online coaching generically, I think that's true for almost any software that you use that you can add more metrics into the conversation in real time. Certainly at Barbell Logic, uh, I think we've taken that to the next level um, in being able to see just and pull down in real time, again, if with the calendar up, I can pull down the matrix of PRs and talk to them and be like, oh, hey, check this out. We're we're close to this PR over here. What do you think about shooting that shooting for that one? In the yeah, next month? yeah, that's actually like, right. Yes, they're bought into now aiming for something and it drives their behavior. It's a piece of information you would have never seen. And then on top of that, you've got all this other information that we we utilize that are both uh, cl both client centered and coach centered. We can see compliance of the clients, right, which is yes. something that you don't tend to keep. For in, and I'm sure some some coaches are really pedantic about this. They keep their compliance for the in person clients, but it's just automated. For, I can see what the compliance is at seven days, at thirty, at ninety, at lifetime. Actually, any at any interval, I can see that by my clients. And so that tells us that tells me red flags when I have a client that is traditionally ninety, ninety two, ninety three percent compliant, and all of a sudden they drop to seventy two percent. That's like a major right. red flag. Something's going on right. in their life. They had a 20% drop in compliance. And so I think that helps reduce the churn. That number means like how many, yes. what percentage of clients you lose every month. And again, I remember because of the cost, because of all these things that we talked about, the flexibility, the cost, those things early on in this podcast, 
I, I, I always felt like I was bringing a good value to my clients at Strong Gym. But the reality is, or when I was coaching in person a, a ton, but the reality is, is that the churn that I had for those clients was actually way higher than it is for online coaching. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes back to the actual, to the actual numerical value of the thing that we're able to provide. And so, you know, I, I think, oops, hang on a second, eject of our video. Um, you know, part, part of that is I think one of the big advantages of what we're trying to do from a client and coach perspective is that, is that the, the, the coaches, our coaches have the ability to make 300 to 500% increase in pay per hour for their clients while only charging the client 25 to 33% of what their standard in person coaching costs. So the client pays one fourth, let's say one third, and the coach gets paid 3x or 4x. And so the value is actually, for, as far as from the normal bell curve of in person coaching, it's the same value for both. The coach gets paid significant more money per hour. The client pays significantly less money for the coaching. The, and then we've already walked through with the additional value propositions of like tremendous flexibility and being able to train or coach when you want, where you want, anytime you want. And in the improvement in effectiveness of coaching, which again, I think what we're arguing here is, can we make a more, more, of a difference in a person's lift in a single session, in a single session in person. Yeah. But over the sure. course of 60 minutes of coaching, I think we can actually make a lot more difference in online coaching. And then when you start throwing in all the other life events and the vacations, like when you're coach, when you're think about how many times your client goes on vacation, when your mm -hmm. client's in a hotel, when your client's in Cancun and I, I get coaching, I get to camp. Yeah. I get mm -hmm. to coach them when they're on vacation. I get to I coach had, them when I'm on vacation. I had yeah, a client so earlier this year who got an Airbnb on an island for six weeks, you know, which is I'm now you're starting to see more of and guy. more of this. I was super jealous. He would send me <laughs> pictures and videos with the ocean jealous. in the background. And, um, but I would have never been able to continue coaching that person. No, right. He probably wouldn't have continued to train. This is the other thing that I have shifted in my philosophy. It used to be like, well, if you don't have access to a barbell and a black iron gin, just take, just take the time off. We'll pick right. up when we get back. Right. Wrong. No, he went out. Habit. <laughs> he Habit and his based. wife are both clients of mine. They went out and bought a uh, sandbag, sand fillable bags. Like that are, you could like make kettlebells out of bags. They yep. packed that on the, on awesome. their that luggage awesome. and took it out there. And so I came up with all these kettlebell. They took kettlebell uh, and TRX. And yeah. we came up with a combination of that and body weight lifts. They kept training and picked right back up when we came back. Minimal loss. I mean, this, this uh, has right. just been, I think. With way I, less detraining. Right. When they got back under the barbell, then had they done nothing for six Almost weeks. Almost back up into PRs. And I'm finding that so much more now that uh, my clients pick back up as if nothing happened yeah. with pretty significant layoffs. Certainly yeah. something we learned after COVID in yeah. um, that effect. whole process. Yep. Yeah, your clients that trained over COVID in their living room with whatever they had were able to go back to the barbell with way less detraining and get right back to where they were much faster than the ones that were just like, I don't know, there's yeah. COVID for two years. Of course, most people didn't know it was coming for two years. And so they thought, oh, I'll take a couple of weeks off. It'll be fine. And when they ended up, next thing you knew, they blinked. It was 18 months had gone by and like massive detraining has occurred. And so yeah. that idea of habit-based training where we train no matter what, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be optimal. It doesn't mean we're always going to get to squat and deadlift, but it means that we, we do the best we can to train and develop those habits. One, like it keeps them training. Two, it keeps up your relationship, the accountability, yes. which is a huge piece of this, right? Yep. What what is your relationship like? I think again back to when I coached in person a ton. What was my relationship like with my clients when they, you know, co college kids that would go home for the summer, and I wouldn't see them for twelve weeks. Yep. What kind of relationship did I have with them after twelve weeks? None. It's like you'd have to completely resell them, and most of them they wouldn't come right. back. And so, again, it's better for everybody. That, um, that churn yeah. and compliance conversation is really interesting to me because I'm I'm curious. How many in-person clients did you coach for over six years? I've never coached a client. Sybil is the only client I've ever coached, my 80-year-old, 87-year-old lady for over six years, but I didn't coach her during COVID. So I don't know that you right. can count it, right? So I coached her all the way to COVID during COVID, basically didn't coach her for two years. And now I've been coaching her consistently again for another 
six months or so, but I don't think I've ever coached anybody for for six years in person over the long span because people's lives change, they move, like you said, all those things. As a matter of fact, we have a client, we have a client who moved away from Strong Gym in Springfield, lives in Little Rock, Arkansas, and has been a block client since the day we launched and is one of our BL1K clients and has now yeah. been there because, and there's no way that that guy was obviously not going to be able to get coaching in Strong Gym in Springfield, Missouri when he moved to Little Rock. And so that's, again, one of those, I've never, what about you guys? You guys ever coached anybody for six or seven years straight in person? I don't think so since I've moved around so much. The only, I have, um, I have two clients who I coached in Atlanta who are now some of my longest time block clients because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were my in-person clients when I was in Atlanta. That's right. <laughs> so right. they're, I think they're probably coming up on six years. Yeah. yeah, but not in person. And now there might be some people out there listening. Well, I've been a, going to this gym for six years, and at, at an individual level, there's going to be cases where and where that's awesome. I Which mean, is, yeah, it's great. We were talking about it earlier. Like, if I could drive to the strength parlor in like ten minutes or yeah. next level barbell, I'd probably or be Sol- training or there. Sully's gym or somebody else. <laughs> like, man, listen. Yeah. Yes, I still. All of this argument is actually like, there are those perfect scenarios where you have these incredible yeah. coaches who are close who do yep. fit your schedule, who do fit your, who do fit your um, budget. Yes, go to them. But let's zoom out to the fitness industry That's at right. large. That is a, such or personal a tiny training. Percentage. Let's just zoom into personal training. That's a right. $12.9 billion industry that has over 300,000 personal trainers operating in that yep. model. And, you know, millions of, of people paying rates that are per session more expensive than what what it would cost to do online you know, coaching. You know what the average payout for the personal trainer is? They're making like oh 18, 19 bucks an hour. Nine, it's, it's 19 terrible. and change per hour mm-hmm. is what Even they're making. Even one of my friends here in Southern California is only getting paid like $19 an hour. That is yep. crazy. What? Which leads to high trainer burnout. There's something like 80, the industry, of course, you know, journals that I've read throw around something like 80% turnover of personal trainers. Because the, gym, which, you know, the gym is taking 60 to 70% right. of the, revenue go look at it's your brutal. local gym especially the big box ones which there's no interestingly there's no single uh company that owns a significant market share which tells you that most personal training is probably boutique mm. but you've got really high turnover within those big box gyms not making a whole lot of money that's providing most of the personal training uh service out to the to the world and it, it that's not who we're talking about that we would want you to go train with if, right. if you're able to find somebody in person we're talking those are diamonds in the rough that are out there right um and we could i think online coaching in general uh could much better serve that 12 point billion 12.9 billion dollar industry that's out there and is expected to grow by like 39 percent over the next 10 years right significant significant growth and yep. you know we've got a huge health problem with obesity in this country that more and more people are looking for personal training. Um, and I think online coaching is going to be a much better big picture solution to people that are looking for that kind of a service. Yeah. So you have access to more professional coaches, all of the professional coaches, essentially, as opposed to the ones that are just in your area. If you're a professional coach, it broadens your potential client pool by, you know, a few billion. Mm-hmm. So, so <laughs> you can, the question is how many clients can you coach in person at a max? Like at I one time, I was going to ask you that when you were running strong gym, 12 was the most I ever did on like one-on-one. And then I did a boot camp on like Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, uh-huh. which would have a handful of ladies in it or whatever. Um, yeah. And in, and, and online, like if you do this online and, and again, okay. So let's say you're doing 12, 12 people, like you're, you're basically working eight, nine hours a day. There's also what we don't talk about. You talk about how much you're getting paid per hour, 19 per hour. That doesn't count the three dead hours or four dead hours during the day. The bimodal distribution of nobody's here at 11 a.m. Nobody's here at 1 1 p.m. So I'm but I'm stuck here all day long. Right. And so now you can go from train from training 10 or 12 clients uh, at $20 an hour, $25 an hour. Maybe if you're great, $50 an hour to coaching 50 clients or 60 clients and making $50 $50 an hour on your worst day and $150 an hour on good days. Like to, it, 
and have the flexibility to do it anywhere you want. To me, it's a no brainer for both the client and the coach. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Cause I, I currently have 32 clients, uh, about a third of which are also nutrition clients and I'm averaging around an hour and a half a day, right? Six days a week. And I, right. so I take, take most of the weekend off as well. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And just to, I got to say that, um, Andrew is almost annoyingly, um, adamant <laughs> about adding as much value as possible to yes. <laughs> the work that he's doing. Yeah. That no, time. It, well, I haven't lost a client since August of 2021. Yeah. Well, so it's I think the, it's the I combination just, of Andrew's adamant about being more and more efficient at what he yes. does. Yeah. While reducing service zero and actually yeah. being more efficient and improving service. I think I'm actually yeah. adding more value. I know you are. You're more value. It's more yeah. value. It's lower churn. It's it's better, it's better effectiveness. At and so your rate of pay goes up tremendously. Right. The value for the client per minute of time or for yes. for the interaction that they're getting, like that value is much better for them. They're paying less money for you you're getting paid right. more like it's and so the churn that doesn't go away you can move across the country you can go on vacation they can move across the country they can go on vacation and they can continue to get coaching from you and you right. develop that relationship and then you're i think you're really all three of us are really adamant about not just being robot coaches that we spend a lot of time and this is one of the things that also i think online coaching takes a bad rap for as being just this thing that's sort of impersonal and I, it's not that hard to develop a, a good relationship with your clients. Like if you actually right. care, there's authenticity there and you're asking them about like, how was the vacation? How are the wife and kids? And it's not just this like, oh, they're on vacation. So reminder well, to ask how wife and kids are. You know, <laughs> right. It's like, it's, yeah. that's not what it is. It's that you're, you're making jokes with them and you get to know them. And like, that's, that's key. Right. I talked about this last year at the, uh, the block conference, the value-based model of professional coaching, which uh, is the model I use when I'm thinking about how to optimize my value per unit time, which might sound a little bit robotic. I do have a bit of a math brain. So I've literally like drawn out graphs and thought about it from like an integral perspective. Like how do I, <laughs> you know, or, you know, calculus, how do I optimize? How do I maximize this graph or this line? And the elements of how, of my value equation are how can I demonstrate an, as much ability as a coach, technical ability, whether that's feedback, exercise selection, programming, integrity, which I perceive as my consistency, both in terms of how quickly I give my feedback and how consistent I am on the video. I've, I've failed in the past and lost some clients because sometimes I'm a little bit too all over the place, you know, from an energy level. And we've yeah. seen this with some, some of our coaches, like if they're, if their moods are way up or way down or kind of erratic, then that can come across as an integrity concern. Um, so that, that's sort of like the baseline being having high integrity and then benevolence is the piece that you're talking about. That's the third that's right. major component. And that's the one that I think increases the most over time yep. in terms of its relative importance in that equation. My ability, my technical ability can come in and out as the circumstances change, particularly inflection points in somebody's life, whether it's their goals changing, their life changing, or their, um, their stress level changing, my experience and ability can kind of spike back up in, in importance. But the thing that keeps the client coming back is that relationship and my, my demonstrating that I care about their training and I care about them as a person. Um, that's, that's what I think uh, keeps that relationship going over uh, six years like I have with some of my clients. Great. Yeah. That's awesome. Anything yeah. else, Nikki? I was just going to wrap it up on my end and say, like, that's what we're going to keep working on trying to do is mm -hmm. increase the value output. And I think that's happening with our program development that you're leading. I think that's happening with the podcast. I think that's happening um, with how much we can do with the client experience. And it's happening every single month. Our coaches get smarter. That's right. Like our coaches learn so much from year to year. I mean, think about how much each of you have increased your own value just because oh, of how much you're able to tremendous. learn from the quantity of clients you're able to work with. Yeah. So our, we are so curious about how to keep delivering that value. Um, we've set the bar, I think, pretty damn high on online coaching. We see our same business model applied elsewhere. 
and Copy, yeah. Pasted, yeah. I can't blame them. <laughs> That's right. Of the, the, what it, what looks like the same business model, but I think mm. what you just highlighted there is something that you can't see. And it's underneath or behind the curtain, under the hood, whatever you want yeah, to call it. Can be claimed it. on the billboards. The right. systems like we do that the drive the the change for the better. Yeah. Can, over time is that's hard to replicate just from yeah. looking at the outside, you yeah, know, the, to compare the proof what we is in the are doing now. Yeah. yeah. And you, you're, when you're able to look at those NPS scores or like the happiness scores of your clients or the happiness scores of your coaches, the mm-hmm. churn rate of your clients, the, the longevity of your clients, the turnover rate of your coaches, the effectiveness of like to actually look at PRs and actual metrics and see how your clients are, are uh, getting better. The, the, dollar per hour that your coaches are making the dollar per hour value that the clients are getting like those are all those are all stats that we match and so other people could say like yeah we you know these are all things that are important to us but we have six years behind us to be able to do it and so that's not to say that there aren't other good online coaching companies or online coaches out it's there, not there are, we're always there, perfect there, there are, no not, not only are we are we not perfect and y'all you know, get this sometimes when people have seen this <laughs> Like uh, Matt Reynolds is just what thinks he's so perfect. Just ask him. It's the one of our podcast. Uh, <laughs> that's one of that's one of the that's reviews of the, the podcast. Reviews. The reality mm-hmm. is, is, is man, no one is harder. No one is harder on this company than the three of us on this call. It's and we only, are never. The only we are way so you can damn, continuously improve is if your default assumption is that you're not perfect. That's right. You, it, like you have to constantly get better. And right. some of it is driven. Let me be clear. Like some of it's driven by fear. I want to continue to do better. Or somebody else is going to take is going to take over, and somebody else is going to do it better than us, and I don't want to do that. So, so this is this is my this is my plea. It, first off, if you are if you getting great in person coaching from a great in person coach, stay with them. That's not this the, the the point of this conversation today was not to pull people away from great in person coaching, but if you need a coach, man, I would like is beseech like an Old Testament word, like I would beseech you, I would plead with you. Mm. To not go to a big box gym <laughs> and hire some kid that doesn't know what they're doing, right? If you're the kid that doesn't know what they're doing, we've got an academy that's for you as well, right? You have an opportunity to come to Barbell Logic Online Coaching as a client, and your first month is 100% free, no matter what. We have coaching for as cheap as $155 a month. In-person coaching, even at those big box gyms, even at the cheap ones, are going to be at minimum double or triple that cost. And so you have nothing to lose. Come sign up for online coaching. Try it for the first month. There's no contracts. There's never any contracts. You can cancel any time and come give it a whirl, right? And see if we're full of shit. Like you might, maybe you get a coach and you're just like, man, evidently Nikki, Andrew, Matt are a lot better than the other. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that'll be the case. We work really hard on this. But if it and is, so, you know, also let us know. We're happy then to let find us know. you the right That's coach. exactly right. So <laughs> we love what we do. Man, it's awesome to be able to travel and get to do this for a job, to get to be an online coach no matter where you are. Uh, in the world, in the United States. And I think it's the same thing, the same big value. We've all been clients. We all are clients of Barbell Logic as well. And to be able to also experience that as a client is really nice to be able to go and be like, hey, coach, I'm not going to be in the gym today. I'm going to be in the hotel gym. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a quick video. Here's a quick picture of the hotel gym and you can get the same thing done. It's all about that consistency. And we get the consistency long-term. The churn goes down. The effectiveness goes up. We build those habit base. um, and And it becomes extremely sustainable. So love it. Love what we're doing. So thank you all for listening. Thank you guys. That was a great conversation. Uh, if this brought you value, definitely share it with somebody else. We'd always love a five-star review anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify specifically. Again, remember that we are on video. You can see me in my sweet uh, Miami. I got a little Miami short sleeve button-up shirt I here like today. The, the plane shape behind you is very Yeah, there's consistent. an airplane that's like almost that is- exactly the same shape as my head. <laughs> As a, as a not former Boeing employee, I don't know whether that's a Boeing plane or not. So oh, yeah. Take, let's take an opportunity to, for that little inside joke there. Yeah, that's right. So I was Andrew used never to be worked C- for Boeing. Andrew used to be the CEO of Boeing. <laughs> we took him away. He also ran a nuclear uh, power plant. Also that. So I don't know, man. It all seems like the same to me. That, what's that, that part's actually good. So, oh. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for listening to the Barbell Logic Podcast, and we'll catch you all next week. Bye.